So this here is a gaming laptop. This is an ASUS Tough Gaming 505DT, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. And this has a, uh, I think a third gen Ryzen CPU in it. I'm not sure exactly which one. We'll check that later. It has eight gigs of DDR4 RAM, probably 266, uh, 266 megahertz RAM. Um, it has a 1650, uh, 1650 graphics card in it, mobile 1650. And it is just a, a gaming laptop. So, you know, as far as gaming laptops go, mid-spec, um, nothing too amazing, nothing too bad. And the question is, can you game on it? Um, and when I say, can you game on it? I don't mean high refresh rate war zone, you know, getting 144 Hertz, um, you know, 4K, everything maxed out. I just mean, can you play something like Apex, uh, something like Counter-Strike, crank up the graphics, um, medium high graphics, HD, and can you have a good time? You know, in those kind of circumstances, can you put the refresh rate? Uh, well, the FPS anyway, can, can we reach above, say, 60? And just basically, can you game on this? And will upgrading the RAM help? Let's find out. Alright, so getting into the Hitman benchmark. This is running at medium settings HD. Right now, we seem to be getting around jumping from 50 to 60 FPS. The uh, FPS seems a little bit unstable it's at 70 now, so pretty good results so far. Um, and you know, with a setup like this, you should be able to get these kinds of results. Getting around the 50s now. And you know, this game is a little bit older. It came out in like 2016 or 2015 or something like that. But it's still a good looking game, even at medium. And you know, now inside with a lot of people, the FPS is dropping a bit, getting from 30 to 40. The average is at around 45, a lot of, uh, lot of people to render, but it's still doing pretty good. A little bit of a spike there, and uh, back to the 50s now. Yeah, not a bad result. Um, definitely, definitely a playable result, but for stability, you might want to play with V-Sync. For these tests, I always switch it off. But um, yeah, still getting around 30 to 50, and the average is at around 45 now. Seems like these are a little bit easier to render, so getting around 60. And uh, yeah, not a bad result. Let's uh, move on to the next one. Okay, getting into the Far Cry New Dawn benchmark here. And uh, this is also running at HD medium um, and uh, no V-Sync. And also remember, I, I didn't mention it, but I'm not using any resolution scaling or NVIDIA uh, technology to, uh, you know, for fidelity stuff, nothing like that. So this is all running pure, uh, just normal graphics on HD. And uh, right now we're getting about 66 FPS, so that's pretty good. The average is at around 47, getting a bit of a dip there. And um, yeah, it's around the 40s, 30s now. There's a little bit of lag. Um, I think the it's a bit tough running this from a hard drive, but all in all, not bad. 45 on medium graphics on HD, not a bad result, more than playable. Um, and it just it seems to stay around that 40 fps benchmark now down to 44 pretty good result 44 average let's move on to shadow of the tomb raider all right getting into the tomb shadow of the tomb raider benchmark now and uh once again running at medium hd uh no anti-ads um no you know full hd no um adaptive scaling or anything like that getting around 
50 FPS in this scene, which is actually pretty good. Um, it's quite a good result so far. And uh, it looks really nice as well. And the thing about laptops is, because the screen is so much smaller, it looks so much more crisp. Even at medium, because this is running at uh, you know medium settings, but it looks like ultra settings just because of how crisp the screen is. And even if you have a laptop that that goes you know to 2K or 4K, that's even better. So I'm just going to turn the volume down a little bit. And you know um, this is an older laptop in terms of of, of modern games because this laptop was purchased maybe two years ago. Um, but it's still very relevant. Like this is proving that you can you can still play games on 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 laptops like these. I mean, this is a modern game. It's getting around 40, 40 to fifty FPS most of the time on medium settings, and it just it looks fantastic. And the thing is, I know this laptop is going to be used for uh, to be almost like a, a media PC slash console kind of thing, and I think it will be excellent for that because. It's not going to be quite up to the specs of the uh, Series S, but I don't think it's going to be super far off either. Um, and remember, this is with 8 gigs RAM, single channel. Uh, we And you can see it in the loading times, of course, but we don't even have the, uh, the dual channel in here yet. So I think it's going to make a big difference. Um, yeah, this scene is taking quite a while to render. And that's what it comes down to most of the time for you know, dual versus single channel RAM and, you know, just the uh, overall, it's, it's loading times and it's, it's rendering times and, um, you know, just how fast the PC is, because this is running really fast, but as you can see, there's latency and pop-in and um, it's struggling to keep up with the, with the demands of the game, uh, just because it's single channel, it's slower speed RAM and there's not a lot of it. Um, so in terms of FPS, it's pretty good, but there's also other factors like loading times and how long you have to sit and wait for it and, you know, how it feels, the latency. Um, and so, yeah, in terms of just pure FPS, this is a good result. But I do think even if the extra 8 gigs of RAM doesn't make that much of a difference in the FPS, the feeling of it, the speed of it will feel a lot better. And... Yeah, actually, I just remembered it's not an extra 8 gigs, it's it's going to be going from 8 gigs to 32 gigs. So that also will make a big difference. So, yeah, let's get that RAM installed and uh, see what the difference is. Um, this has been not too bad, but there have been some issues as you saw, so let's see how it does with uh, four times as much RAM. Yeah, let's do it. Hitman benchmark and uh, yeah the loading time was significantly quicker and it's still on the same hard drive it's still um, the same specs it's just it loaded a lot faster um, in terms of the FPS it seems to be similar to what it was before um, it's getting like an average of like 56 uh, which is a little bit higher I think it's about maybe five or so frames higher, which makes a big difference. Um, but we haven't done the whole test yet. And yeah, but it's, it's, it's a lot more consistent. Um, this scene is definitely doing a lot better. And you can see, I know it's small, but the FPS doesn't jump as much. It's, it's a lot more consistent. Um, this scene is doing a lot better. I think almost about twice as well. So in, in a scene where you have 
a lot of people, a lot of uh, things to render, a lot of things for the CPU to do and for latency to, to be, where latency could really be a problem, it's, it's vital to have enough RAM. So, you know, usually 16 gigs is the sweet spot, um, but I just happen to have 32 gigs of dual channel RAM for this. And yeah, the, the average FPS is very stable. It's, it's, it's making a big difference. Um, this is the same settings um, and it's, it's almost averaging 60 FPS now. So that's more than 10 FPS extra um, for, you know, maybe around $100. So very good result. Let's move on to the next one. All right, getting into the uh, Far Cry New Dawn benchmark here. And uh, once again, the result seems to have gotten a little bit better there. Um, averaging 57 FPS now, and again, it's the same settings, no resolution scaling, HD, medium, no anti-aliasing. And uh, yeah, still averaging about 60 FPS now. Um, it definitely is a better result than what it was with the 8 gigs RAM. Um, and you know, 32 gigs, 32 gigs just gives you a nice overhead, um, especially if you're running. That spike also happened a lot quicker than what I did in the previous one. It took a couple of seconds longer. And overall, this, the stability is just a lot better. Um, that's the main thing for me. Yes, there's like a 10, 10 FPS increase, which is a lot, but it's the stability. It just it feels so much better. And I think that counts for a lot, especially when you're playing. You know, latency is everything. and I think the frame time is just a lot more stable now. So definitely a big upgrade in this one as well. Let's, uh, let's move on to the last one. All right, getting into the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark here. And again, right off the bat, the FPS result is a lot better. Again, five to 10 FPS improvement. And yeah, it's, uh, it's just becoming more apparent that it definitely is worth it um to do that upgrade um because you know even if you just went to 16 gigs from 8 gigs it would still be a similar thing uh you might lose like one or two fps and it's just the, the latency is so much better um you know this fps isn't far off what it was just now um it's a little bit better but it's just the it's the loading times it's the latency it's the way it feels and you can even see the smoothness just in these videos themselves and you know scenes like these where there's a lot of distant LODs there's a lot of trees foliage assets um, a lot of transparency and so to say um, assets that require Z fighting and uh, some animation you know it's a lot more smooth it's a lot more stable this is getting around 60 to 70 FPS now which is again about 10 more than what it did in the previous one if i remember correctly but that's kind of besides the point because it's not just about that fps number um it's it's just the smoothness and i keep repeating that but it's just it feels so much better it looks so much better um yeah i mean look at this scene there was a little bit of pop in there but in the with the eight gigs of ram it took about 20 seconds to render in this one just now it took less than five so yeah um, i mean that was if you if you think about whether it's necessary to upgrade your ram just look at the difference between those two scenes it's a massive improvement and it's still not perfect but it's never going to be perfect when you're gaming on an older laptop with you know an entry-level graphics card and everything but there is performance to be had here and there is gaming to be done i mean this is more than playable this is averaging around 60 fps it's getting around 58 now and this looks fantastic and like i said it's you know these screens have good color they have good pixel density and they look nice um you know rendering this on a bigger screen doesn't look as nice as it does here and you know for a total of about two years ago this laptop cost maybe around 700 dollars and let's add another 150 dollars for the ram you know under $800, you could get a really good gaming experience. And these days that's possible with, with uh, you know, other systems as well. But, you know, this was bought at a time when GPUs weren't available. And, 
yeah, I think it's really impressive. Okay, that's it for the benchmarks. Let's uh, let's do the outro. All right, so there you have it for the RAM upgrade in an older but still relevant gaming laptop. And as you can tell from the uh, from the video, I'm super impressed with the difference. I think it's you know it's it's fantastic to be able to in 2022 get a 63 average result uh, on on Tomb Raider, which is a recent game with. A laptop that costs a couple of years back when the whole GPU shortage and chip shortage was happening. This was around, you know, maybe $700 and the upgrades that was done to this in terms of the bigger NVMe and the RAM and everything was around another, let's say $200. So for $800, you could get this machine that wasn't just used for gaming. Um, but also used for, uh, this is owned by a person that does video editing and, you know, he's been using this for two years and it's done the job. So I think it's really impressive. Um, I think by just doing something small, like a little bit of a RAM upgrade, you can breathe new life into something. Um, and it's not always necessary to do the big upgrade to whatever else you need. And the thing is, you know, you can say for eight hundred dollars. Um, okay, two years ago, it's a different story. But let's say you pay five, six hundred dollars, five, six hundred dollars for something similar. Maybe you get a thirty fifty Ti graphics card. You get a five thousand series uh, AMD CPU, and it comes with let's say eight gigs of RAM and a small NVMe SSD. You know, in that case, it's going to perform quite similarly to this, uh, maybe a little bit better, um, but. Still, you would need to upgrade the RAM, and the question is, is it worth it to upgrade the RAM from a gaming perspective? And I think it definitely is. Um, we saw a much better frame time, we saw stability that wasn't there before, and we saw even an FPS increase, which, you know, that's that's also a big plus. And from now, this, this laptop is retired in terms of uh, work. It's going to be used for uh gaming on a tv so it's going to be sort of like a console and i think it'll it'll do quite well um i think as long as they run hd medium settings they can keep playing they'll, they'll enjoy it and it's definitely good enough so yeah you know these days does it make sense to buy something like this over an xbox series s or over a little desktop pc no it doesn't but you know, this was bought at a different time, prices were different, and um, the point is, even now, you can you can still use things that are a little bit older, you don't always need to upgrade to the next big, nice thing. Um, so, yeah, to answer the question, is it worth it to upgrade your RAM uh, in, a, in a gaming laptop? It definitely is. Uh, you'll see a big improvement, and I think that alone makes it worth it. So... Yeah, that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.